Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Goodman and I am your host of the Fur Babies podcast and the upcoming Fur Babies Summit. I'm here with our Fur Baby question of the day. What is National Prevent a Litter Month? Well, it's February for one thing. Now what does that mean? We are one month closer to, to the return of longer evenings and more sun. Yay! But we're also drawing closer to mating season. Ooh, buddy. Now that's a big one with a lot of repercussions. Just like us, our cats and our dogs will be headed outside to enjoy the nice weather and the first sprigs of spring. Unlike most of us though, many of them will be going outside and entering a heat cycle. So February is National Prevent a Litter Month because we get to try to ward this off at the pass. So put your favorite shelter or veterinarian on speed dial and start your engines, people. It's going to be a busy season. Honestly though, it's great that we have a whole month and maybe a little longer to draw attention to what's coming and to bring awareness that all of us can play a part to help stop it, or at least slow it down. So like I said, this is really one of the most important issues facing us as pet owners. And the issue is that there are more homeless animals than there are people taking them in. Now, 2020 and 2021 saw an uptick in adoptions because we were all sheltering at home and riding through you know what. But the numbers up until that point showed that there was still an impossibly large number of dogs and cats being turned over to shelters. Recent data from the ASPCA noted that 6.3 million animals entering the shelters annually. Of those, 3.1 million were dogs and 3.2 million were cats. Sadly, the numbers pointed to 920,000 shelter animals euthanized, and of those, 390,000 were dogs and 530,000 cats met their end. We are fighting this, so it's not hopeless. We do have hope. Point in time counts give us somewhere between 3,500 and 4,200 shelters in the US, and we are trying to count our rescues. Add those, peop add those in with people who sign up as fosters, and we are gaining traction as a larger network. But there is gray space in these numbers. And just like it's so hard to count our people experiencing homelessness, it's also really challenging to find and count those fur babies who hide or who were lost. And there are a myriad reasons why this happens, but for today, we'll be focusing on unplanned litters. So here are some fun facts about our pregnant ladies, both feline and canine. Did you know that the average pregnancy for a cat lasts between 65 and 69 days? That means they can give birth three times a year on average, and even a fourth time because of the way their heat cycles work. A female cat can get pregnant between four and six months of age, too. A cat can also get pregnant again while she is still nursing her litter. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's a myth that she can't. So they can. Usually, a cat will have between three and five kittens on average per litter, but she can have more than that. So you see, we have average guidelines for pregnancies and litters, but the numbers could be higher. If you're curious, a male cat can impregnate a female cat as young as five to eight months of age. This is when we also have to watch our litter mates. By comparison, the average length of a dog's pregnancy lasts about 63 days. Now there are some fluctuations noted that give a range of 58 days up to 70 days, but on average, we're looking at about two months before a new litter graces the world. Dogs can give birth twice a year and sometimes even three. Now those extra pregnancies aren't ideal for them and often result in a lot of strain on their bodies as well as for their babies. The same goes for our felines. Dog litters vary based on factors like their breed, their age, their size, and their health. Larger dogs can have eight or more puppies while smaller dogs can have four or less on average. Usually if it's their first litter, it may be a smaller number. There may be lives lost as well, depending on factors around the litter and the mother. As I said, it's not ideal for a female to have litters back to back to back, but it happens so often with our strays, and this is what we work to slow down. By spaying one female cat, we can actually prevent between 15 to 75 kittens being born in a year. That's at three cycles a year with five kittens per litter, and for the sake of averages, we figure all five are female. But you see the range, and it's a big one. Now, if there are males, it's harder to calculate because a male can start impregnating females so young and can hit up a whole neighborhood in, in very little time. You know, it's hard on the males too because it spurs so many fights for territory and females and it's just rough for everyone. If we spay one large female dog, 
we can prevent between 16 and 32 pups per year. That's at two cycles per year with eight pups and figuring all eight are girls. So there is some variance there. For the boys, it's also harder to calculate, but you see these numbers spiral very quickly. If you look at a smaller breed, we could have between five and 32 puppies in a year from one mama and her four offspring. So the best way to prevent a litter is to get your pets spayed and neutered. Thus, National Prevent a Litter Month. For outdoor pets and strays or colonies, it's imperative that we work to get them fixed. It's a hard life out there as it is, and we're already trying to bring in as many as we can, but it's challenging. It takes a steady amount of patience and resources to tame or domesticate any dog or cat that is feral, and there are only so many homes and people willing to do it. So we can help by either donating funds to our rescues, our shelters, and even helping our neighbors doing this work. By doing that, we can slowly but surely number, lower our numbers of our homeless pets. We can get ahead of the next season, and that's a big thing, getting ahead. We can also volunteer our hearts and our homes to help foster and socialize them so they have a chance of getting adopted and living a much brighter life. Truly, it just takes a lot of love, a lot of patience, and some well-organized funds. So take a look around your neighborhood or your city and see who you may feel called to reach out and help. I can promise you one thing, helping these guys will fill your heart up. It's a wonderful feeling to see that time and money spent on a little soul going to a loving home. And it fills you up to know that you got to help even just one because one saves many. And it's actually two lives because it's the life you saved by pulling from the shelter, but it also saves the one that has space to go into the shelter now. So that's our question of the day. And it's one we feel very passionate about. So please feel free to share your comments. If it's been of value, these kinds of questions and more are some of the topics we'll be covering in the upcoming Fur Baby Summit. So you can go to furbabysummit.com to get signed up. We thank you for listening and for being the amazing fur baby, fur baby parent that you are. Sending purrs, wags, joy, and love to all of you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.